morning everybody and a warm welcome to Barrington Districts on this glorious Friday morning and today I have a how to video for you and this is basically based um, for Robin at uh, Milton Moe Junction who um, expressed interest on my rock face and I just thought I'd do one generally so for all those who could benefit from it um, then please um, do. Um, it's just my way of doing it, it's the first thing to say, um, I mean, there's no rights and wrong ways of doing things, um, this is just how what I've um, done my rock face and my methods and what I have used. So directly in front of you is my rock face, my new rock face, um, so this is what I have currently, um, and basically um, those of you who've been with me for some time would have known and would have seen the original rock face that I did which was basically um, just plaster that I just stippled on and, and all the rest of it and it was alright but I always liked the idea of having a proper rock face and I'd seen it on other people's layouts and I was wondering how difficult it would be and how you do it and I decided to sort of have a go at it so this is basically how I've gone and done it so I basically removed all of the old rock face that I had before which is plaster and came up with this so I'm going to show you what you need to do and, and what you get. So um, firstly um, you are looking at my computer screen and um, you've got two rock, two rock moulds and that's where, where I started is basically going onto eBay. Um, I originally bought the one on the right before I bought the one on the left and I found sometimes I find with these things it's quite difficult to judge and this is precisely what had happened um, I bought the one on the right and that's how the image looked and they looked like oh that's a mixture of sizes I thought oh yeah that's, that looks pretty good and then when I got the actual mould it turns out to be actually quite a bit smaller and I'll show you that but to be honest with you, it was a good mistake to make, to be honest with you. It was a bit of a mistake because I misjudged it, but it turned out to be a very good mistake um, because that just gave me an option of using different size rock moulds. On the right is the main one, which covers a big chunk of it, and again, you'll see it from the rock mould. And basically, these are the two rock moulds that I've used to complete the whole of that rock face at that end. So, they're both Woodland Scenics. And this one's C124, uh, four, so C1244, and it's a rock face, um, I think it's facet one, I think they call it. Let me just, just quickly just check on this one here, if I just enlarge it. Yeah, it says it's facet rock. Um, the, the seller, a word on the seller is 2K Technologies, and I have to say he was very good. Um, Purely, and I, the reason why I say that is because I actually, when I ordered it and bought it, I got it, I think, within about either the next day or the day after. So he was very quick off the mark to send them out. So that was really, really good. And as you can see, he's offering free PMP as well. So that was another reason. The one on the right is C12, C1234 Rock Mold, and it's called Random Rock. Um, and like I say, these are both available through um, eBay. And basically, um, I did go to my local model shop, but this wasn't something he stocked, which is why I ended up going onto eBay to buy them. So here we are back at the workbench. Or at the workbench, I should say. And in front of you are some of the things we're going to need in order to make the rock face. Um, basically, this is your hydrocal plaster. Now I thought to myself that this would be kind of um, better than using like um, DIY plaster because it's lightweight and I thought that was quite important. Um, I don't, I've never actually tried it with um, DIY plaster so I don't know whether or not it's the same or whether it's, whether it's, I just thought that maybe the weight might make a difference as to whether it will stick better or not. So I decided to use the Woodland Scenics um, and invest in this. Now. It has got a plaster chart and it has got a number of um, instructions on the side here. And if you follow those instructions, um, you won't go too far wrong. But for me, um, it is a little bit of trial and error because I did waste some, I'll be honest. In, in the beginning, the first batch I made wasn't quite right. And um, 
basically it tends to be the general rule of thumb that I find is basically follow the chart but what you're looking for is a creamy consist consistency um, of the liquid of the plaster before you pour it into the mould because if it's too runny it won't set and it won't well basically it won't set properly so you'll have some that will have set but you have a smaller amount that would have set if you see what I mean it'd be like the bottom of the rock mould that would have set but the top you won't be able to use because it'd be all runny and all the rest of it so that's the first thing to sort of bear in mind but basically you're going to need a measuring jug you're also going to need um, these are just some measuring things that I had at home so basically this says it's a quarter, a half, a third and a, and a whole so basically depending on how much you need to basically measure it out, back, that's basically what it is, it's just a bunch of measuring tools and you'll also need a whisk um, this whisk is pretty good because you just press it from the top and it will just whisk away quite nicely so once you pour the, once you follow the instructions which is basically to add the water pour the um, powder on top, leave it for a minute or two um, generally a minute and then whisk it and then pour it straight away into the into the rock moulds and if you've got your creamy consistency um, it will come out something like this and these are the two rock moulds that I bought that I just showed you on the screen now as you can see um, this is the random rock one you can see how much smaller it is and this is the facet rock one so you can see how much area it covers and um, basically um, this is what it looks like if it's set properly I mean actually funny enough this has been setting for, for a couple of days but generally speaking overnight it's fine um, one of the other things to tell you about also is before you put or well, before you pour, which it doesn't actually say it on here but before you pour the plaster into the rock mould is if you spray the inside with either window cleaner or if you put um, washing up liquid and just sp spread the whole washing up liquid into um, all around the bottom of it before you pour the plaster in and that acts as a releasing agent when you come to take the moulds out um, so it makes it a lot easier um, the other thing to bear in mind also is that when you pour the um, the plaster into the moulds before you pl put it all in one go um, just pour a little bit on the bottom to start filling it and then just use a paintbrush just to spread it out to make sure you've got it in all the cracks at the bottom and all the nooks and crannies at the bottom and then try and avoid all the air bubbles as well um, and then you just carry on pouring it and pouring it and then again you just keep using your paintbrush to try and take out as much of the air bubbles as you can um, so this is what we have at the moment now don't worry too much if it if bits break off of it because um, you can always use little bits and pieces that break off um, it's not really a kind of a, a big deal so I'm gonna just sort of take this out and you'll see how it will come out um, now what I tend to do is try and pull it out pull it apart just so it's just pulled away from the ends like I said don't worry too much if it sort of if bits and pieces break and it doesn't come out as a whole piece because I wouldn't worry because this is what generally happens but I just sort of try and stretch it out of the mould before lifting it out and then you can just pop it out there you go it's come out and then you've got I don't know how well that will pick it up but that's, that's what you get and like I said it doesn't always it always, sometimes it breaks in bits and sometimes you've got bits but I wouldn't worry too much about it because this is what generally you, you can see this one here in the middle it's, I generally don't use this one in the middle but you can still use that bit, it's a small bit but you can still use these bits to tidy up corners and bits and pieces so I wouldn't worry too much like I said you've got all these bits that are a bit but you can't use any of that now but I wouldn't worry too much about it, I mean this is what happens with plaster 
And again, you just stretch this one out. And that's what I try and do. Just stretch it out a little bit. And just gently just poke it out. There you go. Got a nice chunky piece there that you can use. Now, as you can see, like this bit here is just broken off. But even though it's a small bit, you can still sort of poke that in a corner somewhere or something. So it's still quite a useful bit, so it's not worth throwing it away. I just keep all the useful bits that I can. And again, here, this is a thin sliver. But you can still use all of these bits here. So you can see what I mean when I was a bit disappointed because I bought this one first thinking, oh, you know, and the picture looks quite big. And you've ended up with, I mean, you've ended up with some decent pieces, but it's going to take you forever to do a rock face like what I've just done using just this from Wild. So let's take out the bigger one and see how that one comes out. And again, just stretch it out. And like I said, it might not come out in one piece, but don't worry about it. Um, oh, you can see there's a crack there appearing, so that's definitely not going to come out in one piece, but that's not the end of the world. See, I mean, that's still a useful little piece that you can still use, so you're never quite sure where it's how you're going to use it, but you can still use it. As you can see, it just sometimes you just have to just pop it out. There you go. I mean, the thing is, it's quite thin on this end, and that's why you've got this, these pieces that are just sort of breaking off. And as you can see, it's just popped. I'll try to do this when I'm trying to do it on the camera. Some of the grooves are quite tight because it's quite deep. So you just sort of, there you go. Finally it's popped. So there you go, you've got a real big chunky piece there. I mean, you're always going to have all these little breakages and things like that, but like I said, all these little useful pieces will fill corners and things, so it's it's always worth keeping them, even that little bit. Anything that's not useful, obviously, I don't keep, but um, I'm just sort of eyeing this up to see whether or not. So anyway, you'll see, so, you, so we've ended up from those two rock moulds with the selection of my apologies I think wasn't monitoring the time and the time ran out um, yeah so basically we've ended up with this selection of rocks to use now I don't necessarily need all these big rocks at the moment I'm, I sort of did this one because I had some plaster left over so I thought well I'll put it onto the other rock models not to throw the, throw the, throw the hydrocal away and what I'm probably I might use that over towards the fiddle yard end because I might do another scenic bit down that end but what I was really interested in doing is I'm just, because I've still got to finish off that little bit by the signal box, and all these little bits that have broken off here are all useful little bits that can be used in order to um, create the rest of that rock face. And all these bigger bits can just be put to one side and kept and then used later on. So we'll see how, how this is going to pan out. So the next stage is putting it onto the layout itself. So here we are at the um, moorward end where the rock face is and this is where I'm going to be doing some additional work which I showed you um, the other day when I was doing a bit of a, a little bit of a tour. I don't know if you can how well you can see there. And basically um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be tidying up all of this area and adding some more 
um, rocks and things like that just to blend it all in and tidy it all up and basically um, you're just going to see how I do it and as you can see or you, uh, hopefully you can see um, is that basically I've just basically plonked it in um, I've just, just added all these bits of rock and I've just added it all in so they're not, they're not particularly blended in particularly fantastically well or anything like that but um, I'll show you how to go about doing that um, as we go along. Now it is a bit tight around here so I'm not sure how well the camera's going to be able to pick it up but hopefully I'll be able to show you um, what I'm actually going to be doing and all the rest of it. The other thing you're going to need for this is I've got a kitchen board here, an old kitchen board and I've got all my pieces laid out here to work out which ones I'm going to use. Um, you're also going to need a jug of water with a paintbrush and that's quite important and also you're going to need um, some just general filler. Now again, once again, this isn't this is just cheap and cheerful stuff from the pound land literally one pound for a tub um, so it doesn't have to be particularly great plaster or anything and this acts as A an adhesive and B it sort of blends everything in once you've done it all now what I'm planning on doing is just to blend this area in before I do the scenic work I want to raise this up here where the steps are and tidy that up add a bit more rock along here and then blend it all in to to the background before I do all the scenic work on it and show you that on the next video. Now I'm going to be recording from this angle because it's a bit too tight and this is about as best as I can get it without it getting too close um, because basically we're right on, if I just show you quickly where we're at, it's so tight to get the camera in here um, it's the best angle I'm going to get it is pretty much where we're at now but what I'll do is I'll Hopefully it will come up on the screen there and um, basically I will show you um, as the various processes in a bit more detail as we go along. So I'm not exactly sure where we're going to start but literally we've opened up our tub and I'm just trying to see where what looks good really to be honest. Um, just sort of having a rough idea, rough sort of placing of. It doesn't have to be particularly, it's particularly brilliant. As long as it, as long as it's close enough, that they're relatively touching and everything like that. It doesn't matter if there's gaps and things like that. Um, it it really really doesn't matter, to be honest with you. So here you go. There's there's a bit of filler just on my finger. and you just put it on the side, on the back of it and then you just sort of press it in and then you just sort of go over it like that and that's all it needs and then you just let it go off and then you just move on to the next piece and it's just like a giant jigsaw puzzle you sort of try and work out what you think is going to work quite well so I think we're going to add another piece like that. Again, take some more filler, put it on the back, press it in, and then just hopefully you can see me just sort of blending that in. As you can see, I've just actually split it there can see where I've just actually just broke that piece but I won't worry about that because we can always go over that it's not really a problem you just sort of just go with the flow if that's where that piece wants to go um, then that's fine and I think I might have um, maybe one more piece and these are all the little bits and pieces that I said to you before that came off the big piece or that got broken off just keep all those little bits because those all those little bits will work out really really nicely so there's another little bit there and that will go in there as well it 
So I think we're relatively happy with what we have there. What I might do is put this little bit here, there's a bit here, and I'll go shove that right in the bottom. That will fill out that little gap there. And then I think that will be it for this little section here. And um, we're gonna just forgive me if my fingers get a bit too close and personal today to lens. And again, I think it's actually broke down the bottom. But like I said, it doesn't really matter too much because we're going to blend that all in and it's going to look really, really nice. Right. So for me, on this particular piece, that is about where I want everything. Like I said, it doesn't matter that we've got all these little bits and pieces here. It doesn't matter. Now the next thing to do, so let me just show you where we're at. So basically we've plonked all the pieces as best we can and that's how we've got it at the moment. And so hopefully this is all coming out because I'm sort of doing it from the other direction really. So now we've got to blend it all in now. Right, so we're going to do this bit now. Now I've left it on the bottom because I just can't quite get the right angle. This is where the Mobius might have come in pretty handy, but never mind. Um, so what I'm going to do now is start filling in the gaps. Now as you can see there's quite a few gaps and you just basically, you just basically plonk that big piece of um, plaster in there, like so. Now don't worry that it looks a bit odd because this is where you take your your, your paintbrush and you've dipped it in the water and this is where you start to sort of play with it and you start to blend it all in and start filling in the gaps where you can and if the paintbrush gets a bit too dry you just dip it in the water again and you start spreading it out and it doesn't matter that there's texture to the plaster as you're spreading it because that just kind of looks more that, that just looks just as natural because it kind of blends in with the um, with the rock face that you've got so I wouldn't worry too much about that and at the same time you're just filling in the gaps And then, to be honest with you, once this is all dried up, you won't really be able to tell where the joins are. Because I had that trouble when I did the main rock face. I was there trying to think, figure out where all the joins are. And you just couldn't tell. This is a nice, this is something that Woodland Scenics don't tell you, to be honest. I got this, this little tip off uh, a site, an American site, a chap that was doing his rock face and he was saying that it's a good idea to do this. And again, look, I'll just pop it on the top here. So it looks like a bit of a blob. But again, it's like you're trying to smooth it out. You take your paintbrush. and then you just blend it all in then it doesn't look like you've just plonked a, a bit of rock there because you've just blended it all in I mean I'm just trying to build up the layers because this is where the, um, the steps for the signal for, for the signal box are so I have to just raise it slightly so that's why I'm kind of blending that in and hopefully like I said as I'm doing it I'm sort of doing it and holding the camera with the other hand and hopefully you can see where I'm going with this and you can see how it's just blending in and if you have gaps like this you can either fill it with more more filler or you can put um, say um, some more bushes or underbrush once you're ready to to sort of paint it up and all the rest of it so I'm just going to carry on going on along here and I'll come back to you once we're all done so here we are and we're back and I just thought I'd show you what I've done it's all now blended in and all the gaps have disappeared and I've flattened it all out 
so this will all be ready for scenery probably tomorrow I'm going to just let that all go off for the rest of the day and probably tomorrow and you can see how it's all just blended into the scenery I haven't there's no gaps anywhere if I look at it from the front you'll see also um, I don't know how well you can see it my apologies because I know it's a bit tricky to see but basically you can see that there isn't any gaps anywhere there is a bit of a crack there and that was a crack that I, that I had last time that I just want to put that bit in there but I think I'm going to leave that because what I might do is actually put a little bit of foliage in there and just leave that there just protruding um, so I decided to leave that bit there um, actually I can see there's a bit there that I've kind of really missed but again that doesn't really matter too much because that piece there that I've just missed out I just put some foliage in there and blend that all in it's not really a big big deal but you can see how it's generally all been blended in you can't really tell where you've joined it all up so that's pretty good and that's how we have it and what I'll do is in part two I'll show you um, how I go about painting it and all the rest of it so stick, stick with me for that and um, I hope this has been useful um, like I said the main tip of blending this all in is just basically using your paintbrush and, and a little brush and, and some water and then you can stretch the plaster to blend it all in so it doesn't matter if you just put big chunks of it on it's, you know you just blend it in with the paintbrush and the water so I hope this has been useful um, and I hope this has given some of you some guidance or some confidence to do it and um, to be honest with you I thought it was a bit daunting at first when I did it but I'm really glad I did it it's well worth the effort in the end um, if you do buy the ready mould ones which are already pre-made you can't really do anything with them you can't break them you can't cut them and all the rest of it to shape um, whereas this way um, with these ones you can and you can make as many as you want with the moulds that you have so once you've paid for the moulds you can make as many as you want or as much as you want um, so take care and then thanks for watching please feel free to comment and subscribe and like I said once again I hope this has been useful and helpful to some of you and stick stick with me for part two and I'll show you how I go about colouring it and painting it all up so take care and um, bye for now